This is the Vera Rubin Observatory. I'm standing on a mountaintop in Chile called Serra Panchon in front of the newest telescope in the world. And it holds two Guinness World Records for the largest camera and the largest lens. And it's going to look at the entire southern sky every three nights for the next 10 years. And what we're gonna get from that is an entirely new look at the universe and a new understanding of some of the biggest mysteries out there. I'm next to the telescope and it feels a little bit chilly. They keep it pretty cold in here just to match the outside temperature. And they do that because they want to eliminate any of the stress on the glass and make sure that there aren't any wobbles in, in any of the images that they're going to get. And you can see in front of me the calibration screen that they use to calibrate the camera and then the telescope itself. This is just a behemoth of a room and a machine. It feels a little bit, I don't know, like a little bit like a cathedral. That was where the primary tertiary mirror, which we call M1, M3, came in from the outside and reached its final home inside the observatory. After the glass blank was cleaned, it was moved under this giant coating chamber here to get ready for coating. Once that was done, the final finished mirror was rolled out and it was awesome to see a, a glass blank go in and a really shiny, beautiful mirror come out. A couple floors down from where the telescope actually sits is sort of the support center. There's this enormous uh, concrete pillar that you need to hold up 350 tons, which is what the telescope weighs. And then behind me over here, we've got this incredible uh, crane that's used to lift things like the camera onto the telescope. I'm also going to take you with me into the cooling center. So the telescope has to be cooled so that it can avoid any vibrations from the dome opening or from the wind outside. And this takes an enormous amount of <laughs> cabling and cooling equipment. It's kind of amazing. So these keep it at that really chilly minus 100 degrees Celsius. These lines have a lot of slack in them because the telescope obviously moves at night and you don't want there to be a lot of tension in these lines coming from, you know, just the telescope moving. Right now I'm preparing the telescope to do all the movements. So basically here is where I'm going to send the, all the scripts. So once I, I do this, the telescope and dome will move. So this is 10% of maximum speed. Ruben will operate at seven times the speed, but the drive system can handle 10 times. That is a very respectable telescope speed. <laughs> Vera Rubin is going to be making essentially a time-lapse video of the universe. They're going to be taking these images every three nights and then stacking them. It's going to produce 60 petabytes over its entire run of 10 years. And that's going to help us understand things like what is the large-scale structure of dark matter across the universe? Or how fast is the universe actually expanding because of dark energy? It could also tell us things that we have never known to even ask about. We might see things we've never seen before. Really rare astronomical events, huge supernovae explosions, things we just don't know are out there as regularly as they might be. Hello, control room. That sound we're hearing, that's the shutter. A single whoosh is the sound of the camera shutter either opening or closing, like that. We have two sets of shutter blades, and so what happens is they'll open from one side and they'll close from the same side. And the reason for that is so that the entire focal plane can be illuminated with the same amount of light. There's a microphone in there. Yeah. It is not this loud. In actual <laughs> yeah, no, if you stand next to the camera, you can't hear it. So then every time the whoosh whoosh happens of the shutter, do we get a new image here? Yes. Now we're taking an image, so we're on the sky. Yeah. And once we hear it again, the noise, we will see the new image here. Yeah. So the last one we heard was open. Exactly. The next one we heard is closed and then two seconds. Exactly. And then it pops on the image. Brand new. It hasn't been what we call flat fielded. And those diagonal lines that you see 
is the uh, surface pattern of when they made the detectors. It's called the annealing pattern. And then on the right, this is after we've removed that, so it looks a lot better. <laughs> and we see a bunch of stars and a nice galaxy right here. And most everything there. Astronomers often tell us, we think we know what's going on, but once the Vera Rubin Observatory comes online, then we'll really have the answers. And we're at that moment now. The telescope is on, they're taking the first data, and the answers are to come. <laughs>